<coughs> hey friends. There we go. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Dan and I have several projects <coughs> I'm going to be working on my big six foot six, six, no, six by six <laughs> painting in the garage, in the hot garage later today. But at the moment, I'm in the comfort of my upstairs studio. Going to finish. This is Daily Out Adventure number 640. Finishing touches or final details on last Sunday's wedding. Thank you for joining me. <clears throat> so I am nearly all finished on this uh, painting. I should say, I thought I was 99% finished till I started looking and taking careful notes and I've come up with a punch list of about eight different items that I want. <laughs> so there you go. You start looking and then you start finding. So I am going to do my um, traditional, if you will, approach, which is any time I get the opportunity to go back into a painting, a dry painting, on a subsequent day. I start by glazing the entire canvas. Why? Because, will you say it with me? Ain't a color made that don't look better with something else on top of it. <laughs> There's no reason for my colloquial grammar there, except as a mnemonic device. Say something weird. Yeah, you say something in, a, in an unusual manner over and over and over, and people tend to remember it. So there you go. Ain't a color made that don't look better with something else on top of it. Or in other words, Transparent colors beat opaque colors all the pieces. We've been over that so many times. I don't want to go over it again. I will someday, but somebody might say, well, that's your opinion. No, 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 no. This is not a matter of opinion. This is a matter of mathematics and physics. And that's all I'm going to say. It's not a matter. Now, does that mean, does that mean that a painting with all transparent colors on it is better than a painting with mixture? And the answer is no. Com uh, variety, the principle of variety in every respect trumps nearly every other rule in painting. In other words, variety wins. So it's actually better to have a painting that has mostly transparent but some little bits of opaque. Why? Variety. Right, there you go. All right, so I've just covered this entire canvas with a very pale, thin glaze of brownish, orangish yellow, or yellowish, orangish brown. <laughs> and the painting was already quite warm without that. So before I go any further, I'm actually going to pick up a rag, and I do not need. Laura to be any yellower so and then some of you are saying well if you're gonna take it off why did you put it on I mean, every furniture maker knows putting it on and taking it off are not the same thing in other words a rub hand rubbed finish is is always a better look all right that's again I, I've talked about the NAF I don't want to repeat all of that right now all right, my punch list then will be, actually, before I get to the punch list, one of the questions I always ask of myself when I'm doing a glaze is, is there any vignette, and I, I turn the word vignette into a verb, and then a gerund, vignetting. <laughs> is, there, is it appropriate to, to vignette any of these corners? And it turns out, sure enough, there is. This corner up here does not to be, need to be as bright as it is. So just by darkening that corner a little bit is still pretty when you look at it, but uh, 
because it's, you can see layers of transparent color, but you're not, you're not, you don't get stuck up there. So that's what I want. Same thing down here. This corner can be darker. It is not an absolute rule that all paintings or photographs should have a vignette. No, 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 no. But it is a good rule that, yeah, most of them should. Most of the time, most of the time, it looks better. Same thing up here. And lo and behold, it turns out I'm going to be doing all four corners. I didn't, hadn't really taken score before I started. But it turns out all four corners of the painting can stand to be darkened just slightly. It strengthens the composition just a little bit. The composition of this painting is very simple. Bam! One blob of light or a shaft of light, if you will. That's all. Everything else is mid-tone and dark tone. Very, very, very simple. And um, it just happens to work with this particular subject matter. All right, I like it better already. <laughs> That's always good news. And this is part of the reason why I glaze on a second day as well, because it's so easy to make big improvements with very little work, very little time, as I think I have just done. Big improvement, very little investment. All right. I'll clean those brushes up sometime later. Now, to my punch list. Oh, yeah. I just, I just read it. The curve of the stairs. So, um, oh, by the way, t um, the medium that I'm using right now is actually a combination of my normal liquid, which is a very fast drying. And by the way, I have an air conditioner running and I have a fan on over my head. And I have a door to my office open, so which is about 10 feet away from me. So I feel like I'm I'm pretty well protected from these fumes. I'm not in a closed in environment. I would not the, the only downside of liquid, I, it's my favorite medium. Uh, but the only downside is it it's a little bit smelly. Alright, so the curve of the stairs is kind of tricky because it doesn't curve as much as the railing does because of perspective. But after I came back to this painting uh, today, I said, wait a minute, I don't think that, that curve is correct. And I pulled up my photograph and, and had that confirmed to me. So I'm basically making this curve a little steeper. It was a little too straight. And I think I can get away with that correction, in a sense, without getting caught, if you know what I mean. Let me look at the photograph one more time and see what kind of, yeah, yeah, what kind of trim, what kind of architectural details. Yeah, so there's a, there's a ridge, as, as I would have expected. In a, in a nice house. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna mess that up a little bit. I don't mean I don't mean just the messing up I'm doing right now. I mean I'm going to um, come back and do light. So you, you you all should if you follow me on a regular basis. Any chats? Yep. Hello. Hello, Orlinda. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate it. Uh, it's the little differences that make, it is, good word, it is the little differences that make a big difference. Little details make a big difference. All right, anytime you do dark, that's always a wind up, that's always the setup. You're never finished with a painting if you've just put dark paint on it. Now, since I've got dark paint right here in my brushes, there are a few other places that need dark. Uh, again, try to remember to zoom back out. Uh, this woman, uh, she, at one point her arm came down here and then I moved it so she's bent at the elbow and I didn't cover up or erase the, the first arm quite adequately enough. Uh, then it looked a little bit like this. the woman in the chartreuse dress had 
three legs maybe. So I just, <laughs> that's an exaggeration. But anyway, I just pushed. And actually, on one of the last times through, an, another person appeared back here, much to my surprise. So there's actually four people in that little grouping there. Oh, can, there you go. There's actually four people. That last head popped out again, somewhat to my surprise. All right, I remember to zoom back out, gang. Cheers. Uh, I'm looking around now. Well, let me look at my list. <clears throat> Green woman's arm. Yeah, one more thing. It's a little bit of perspective issue. A little bit of drawing. All right, I think... I think that's got it done. As far as the dark details are concerned, I'll keep those brushes handy just in case I need to do some more dark stuff later on. So let's go back to the um, the stairs. that curve that I modified slightly. Let's see if I can, again, I'm trying to sneak in so that the, view, the viewer of my painting doesn't discern that I made sort of a late change to the stairs. I would not want, want that to be apparent. So that happens, at, you know, not, not terribly infrequently, I would say, in painting, that, you, that you're making late changes, that, but you don't want it to look like a late change. So there's different ways that you can disguise it. Usually it's not too difficult. We'll find out here in a minute if I'm successfully pulling it off. Well, would you look at that? I, <laughs> I am going to be able to pull it off, but it turns out this, this curve down here, well, let's fix this one first. This actually needs to come up even a little bit more, I think. Now, it's obvious, I'm, I'm sure it's obvious when I'm doing stuff, stuff like this, that I'm painting, you know, in a certain, if, if this over here, this is a, 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 a gauge, if this is extreme realism and this is extreme abstraction, you know, I'm kind of in the middle, a little bit leaning toward even more abstract, of course, so all the changes I, all the painting has to have that sort in a sense same degree of abstraction that's a good way to put it i'm not sure i've ever put it that way before the entire painting well with the with the exception of portraits okay the entire painting i should i guess i should say the rest of the painting not including the portrait in this case two portraits uh the the entire painting should have more or less the same degree of abstraction so even when I'm painting this curve of the stairs, um, I don't want it to get too, too, too precise. So it, it, it's got to be as abstract as everything else. That, that's a good way to put it. I'm not sure I've ever said it that way before. Your entire painting, with the exception of portrait faces or portrait figures. So if you're not doing a portrait, generally speaking. Now, I, okay, I'm getting myself in trouble now because it's also the, the focal point gen of any painting generally has more detail. But I, th I think you understand that, don't you? Wherever the focal point is, in this case it's her face, you go out more or less in concentric circles like the rings of a target or the ripples in a water from realism to abstraction. So everything around here. So Okay, so I'm going to contradict what I just said a few minutes ago. I'm actually, I'm going to refine it. So given the principle of radiating realism, <laughs> we're making this up. I'm talking about radiating out from a center, most realistic to most abstract. Given that principle is already in effect and already understood, then <laughs> having said that, the entire painting should fit within that gradation. 
I've talked quite a bit lately about jerking and wiggling hands. Do you see how my left hand is, it looks like I really don't have con control because because I don't. I want to encourage a lot of you, especially if you're a beginner painter or if you're an older painter. I can't tell you how many older painters I've talked to and they said, well, I used to paint, you know, like somebody in their 70s or 80s or something like that, and I used to paint, but then my hand shakes too much, so I can't paint anymore. Now, it's possible that your hand truly might shake so much you really can't paint anymore. I'm thinking about 95% of the time when I hear that from somebody, I'm going, oh, oh, I wish I'd gotten a hold of you when you were younger because you're actually painting better with your hand shaking. You're, you're getting better now not worse. So all the shaking you see, and I'm not putting this down to old age. I'm just putting this down to I know how to handle a brush. And the answer is not handling it like this. All right? Just let it wiggle and jiggle a little bit. No, don't be afraid of that. It's, again, it's your hand trying to turn you into a good painter. The essence, say it with me, the essence of good painting is making interesting marks. Boy, if you if you follow me at all, you've heard me say that. So much so that you regulars are going, I'm tired of you saying that, but I have to say it for any newcomers that might show up. The essence, I'm going to say it again, <laughs> the essence of good painting is making interesting marks. And a very, very good question is, so what are interesting marks? What does that mean? And one of the answers is, it's not a perfect answer, but it gets you in the right direction. Interesting marks are usually the, 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 the wiggling, jiggling, not quite perfectly controlled movements that you're, like my hand is doing right now, that your hand makes when you're not tongue painting. Right? There's, there's a time for tongue painting. There is. Um, I don't have, you know, the last, the previous wedding portrait to this one, I was doing hyper, sure, hyper realistic portraits this big. That, ladies and gentlemen, is tongue painting. And there's a time and a place for that. But for the most part, and I only do that because I, because I ain't John Singer Sargent, that's all. If I was as good as he was, I would, I would even do small portraits and a whole bunch of other people too, I'm, that I'm not as good as. But if, as I get better at portraits, and by the way, I'm 65 years old, and I'm just on the cusp <laughs> of good painting. I am just almost, and I'm not being humble. Don't say, oh, Dan, you're a good painter. No, 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 I don't want to hear it. I do not want to hear it. I tell you, I am just on the verge of becoming a good painter. Um, and... Uh, I mean, those of us who are artists, we are so blessed. We are so lucky. What other career in the world can there possibly be where you're thinking, I'm just coming into my best years at age 65? Well, I absolutely believe that. And those of you who are my age or older, Marlene, <laughs> you're an inspiration to us. <laughs> in case you're watching, in case you see this later. Toby brings up a good, a good, good point. I, I usually mention when I talk about this older person handshaking stuff, I usually say my hero in this regard is Rembrandt. And Toby says he had to use a mall stick. I'm not surprised. There's not an art historian on the planet worth his salt. Now, there might be some teenagers somewhere. <laughs> There's a reason I say that, but I won't get into it. Who thinks that Rembrandt's earlier painter paintings are better than his later ones. But there's not an art historian worth his salt, frankly. Who thinks that? Everybody recognizes Rembrandt's later paintings as superior to his earlier ones. And uh, when I was a young man, and when I was an arrogant young <laughs> uh, college art student, I thought, well, yeah, of course these, his paintings got messier. That's because his hand was shaking and his eyes were bad. Now that I'm an arrogant, 
now that I'm an arrogant 65-year-old artist, I think I was exactly correct. <laughs> That's exactly when I was 20 years old, my opinion was correct. It's because his hand was shaking and his eyes were going bad. But, but, have it, but in spite of that, even at the time, I thought, yeah, his, his later paintings are better. So, there you go. Don't let shaking hands keep you from producing your best, the best artwork of your life. All right, so I've got a kind of a mid-tone flesh, flesh tan brown here on my brushes. Um, here's one of the things on my, I was going to say bucket list. It's not, it's a punch list. This lady's face. This happens sometimes when you're painting in a very abstract manner. You just end up with marks that aren't, aren't pleasant. She has a pencil line going right to her face. It just doesn't, I, I didn't notice it when I was painting. So there, that's all I'm going to do. It's fixed. Um, I'm going to give her a little better chin. I teach often, one of my favorite subjects to teach is anatomy in, in any context whatsoever. Uh, and one of my favorite anatomy classes is teaching how to, I call it abstracting figures into your into your paintings. The, the exact, the very thing that I've done in this painting. It's one of my favorite subjects. And um, one of the key, see, see my, my figures are very abstract. Correct? No, no question there. I don't, I don't think. Nobody will say, uh-uh. They're, in fact, they're probably so abstract, some people won't like them, and that, that's okay. You can't paint for everybody. You can't please everybody. I, I rather quite like this level of abstraction. It could even be, they could even be more abstracted to, for my taste, but be that as it may, that's what they're done here. Um, but one of the key principles for being able to do this is you have to become acquainted with the human figure. The better you can draw a realistic human figure, then the better you can paint uh, an abstract human figure. I just decided, this is not on my, on my punch list, but I just decided with this flesh tone that's on my brushes, I can do a slight, slight highlight. I mean, this is real dangerous because because I like the bride's face quite a bit the way it is, and I don't want to mess it up. There, I'm going to stop right there. No, I'm not. I'm going to do the back of her hand right here. Ooh, that's nice. A little bit too sharp, but otherwise nice. Um, okay, back to my punch list. Let's see what I've got. And I'll actually cross-stroke things. I'm so OCD that I actually like... <laughs> I actually like... No, I am not OCD. I am OC. I'm, I am obsessive compulsive. There is no question about that, but I'm not obsessive compulsive to the point of disorder. Okay, curve of stairs, that's done. Green woman arm, that's done. Blue woman face, that's done. Red leg number two, got, that's done. Yellow in kitchen blue. I did the bottom stairs. All right, I just have three things left on my list, and then it's anything else I feel like doing, of course. And um, one of the things on my list, or two things, depending how you're counting, is the yellow-orange glow. This is actually a kitchen back here, and it's mostly under counter lighting. I don't, I don't care that you know that. I'm just explaining that's where that comes from. And I don't care that, that Laura and Don even understand that that's what that is, but that is what that represents. And I feel like, I, again, not too much attention over here, but just a little tiny bit. I can bring that out a little bit. And same thing over here where there's light coming in. This is actually through this door is their dining room and the front of the house has windows in the dining room so that we're getting a daylight glow in there. And I think, so my favorite word for stuff like this is energy. The question always is, how much energy is, is the right amount of energy? On every square centimeter of the painting, that's the question. On every speck of the painting, is this the right level of energy? 
that's that's my favorite kind of internal talk and um i just decided that yeah just a tiny bit more interest over here not much you can see the the color i'm putting on just slightly lighter than it was already there but um yeah i would like you to perhaps be become familiar with using the term energy yeah i th i think that's good enough do you see how subtle that is and i think it makes it slightly slightly better before i clean off these brushes do i want that bright orange anywhere else in the painting yeah yeah a little bit on the groom and some of these the marks i'm doing right now are just purely abstract again energy and i mean this is such a simple painting um in this in compositionally it's uh it's uh, in a sense a one mass a singular mass composition that is boom all the lights right there you just even she's light enough that you just in composition you just call that one and that's a valid way especially for a portrait that's a valid way of composing a painting um, also I like to use the term psychological focal points there are two kinds of focal points in a painting in the way I talk one is a compositional focal point and it has to do with contrast major lines um, major you know value sections of the painting and so forth um, But then, in addition to that, there are, sorry, I'm looking for a place to stash my used paint, my used brushes, so I don't have to clean them. All right, there, got that done. Um, in addition to that, there are psychological focal points. I don't, let me ignore this painting for a minute. Imagine you've got a great big meadow, <laughs> trees around the edge, mountains in the background, beautiful sky. That's one kind of painting, isn't it? As soon as you put, even way in the background, a woman sitting on a blanket, boom, your painting has changed dramatically because you now have a psychological focal point. In fact, if go back to the meadow without the woman, if you put a horse in them, you've changed the painting dramatically. Um, those, that's what I call psychological focal points. As soon as you put a human thing or an animal thing, and get this, what if you have a painting of a nice brownstone New York, brownstone apartment with the, you know, the stairs and the railings and the door and the doorbell and the transom light over the, over the door and maybe a garbage can, blah, blah, blah. Get a cityscape. That's, that's perfectly, that's a done painting. What happens if you add one roller skate to the third step from the bottom or top. Boom! You've just changed the painting. Not as dramatically as if you'd put a person in it, but simply a human object, a human made, you know, a, a, what's the word I'm looking for? An intimate object, uh, like a roller skate. I don't know, intimate is not the right word. Um, <laughs> yeah, a pair of underwear. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't want to. That's not where we're not where we're going. That indeed would change the 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 the, the, the feeling of the painting. But anyway, just make just get that point that that uh, there is such a thing as psychological focal points. People, things that pertain directly to people and even animals. All right, I'm just about done. Yep, the last thing is I decided I would like to modify, just slightly, modify um, the, the ribbons or accentuate the ribbons. Again, energy is a pretty good word here. I want to make the ribbons that are hanging it from the flowers here 
they just they look they look unfinished they're a little bit too wispy so I want to come down on several of them just give them a nice back forgive me for a moment I'm going to look at a photograph just yeah they're hanging pretty much straight down I see lots of good chats you guys I can't wait to read them in just a minute All right, I believe that's good enough. Hey, you know what? It's been quite a while since I did my <laughs> my my rant <laughs> on on signature. So <laughs> some of you have missed it. So let let you deserve to hear this rant. All right. <laughs> I hope it's not actually a rant, but but some of you might might think it is. <laughs> Um, I have opinions. I have strong opinions about signatures. And if you already have your, uh, your signature already established, then you can ignore this. But especially if there's anyone out there who's still open to input in this regard. Um, number one. I believe, uh, whatever. Now, I, I guess I've got to say, if you're just a hobbyist, just. I mean, hobbyists are great, don't get me wrong. But if you're not trying to make a living, if you're just whatever. Now, you, you, you can ignore this completely, especially though, for those of you who, who want to make any kind of dent but leaving the world, you know, hopefully your paintings are going to last a lot longer than you. Um, and by all means, am I am I in? Yep, I'm in the frame. Then by all means, make your signature legible. That's number one. So you decide what your signature is. I've described mine in this way. This is the way I sign my checks. But it's there. It's just tidied up a great deal because the way I sign my checks probably the way you sign yours you can't really read I mean some people you can read their signature but most people are like me you can't really read it so this is my what I this is my real signature but I call it Disneyfied <laughs> he's probably Walt Disney probably probably the most famous signature in the Western world is Walt Disney Disney and um, it's obviously a, a graphic designed, you know, smoothing out of his, I would presume, his real signature. So that's what I've done to mine as well. Number one, make it legible. Number two, you ready for this? This is, again, for those of you who need this. Number two, do not use initials. Unless that's how the world knows you. If the no, world knows you as J.P. Smith, then by all means, sign your painting J.P. Smith. But if everybody in the world knows you as John or Johnny or James, you sign it by the name that you're known by. All right? Now, what about, there, there are some, can be some exceptions. I'm trying to think of one. If your name is as long as Bartholomew, <laughs> or Mayor Shalala Hashbaz. <laughs> That's the longest name in the Bible. <laughs> then maybe you can use an initial. But honestly, if your name is Bartholomew, people probably know you as Bart. So do not sign your name. Do not sign your signature B. Jones. Sign it Bart. Okay. And I, so why do people sign their now let's get down to brass tacks. Why do people sign their initial? Because they're, they're not comfortable writing with a brush. Okay, now let's again, let's get down to brass tacks. The reason they're not comfortable signing their painting with a brush is because they are not using a Windsor and Newton Series 7. That's why, forgive me, most of you people, that's why your signature looks like crap. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's because you're not using a Winsor Newton Series 7. 
often imitated, in my opinion so far, never matched. Not a cheap brush, but a number one like this, you know, $10, $12, something like that. All right, make it legible. Do not use initials. Um, use a Winsor Newton Series 7. Position and color. Um, the color is based on the highlight or uh, color, the overall color. This color right here is this color right here. That's pretty obvious. Okay. Let me shoot down a couple myths just for fun or whatever, just for education. A couple crazy things I've actually heard people say about signatures. And then this is like art professors have said this foolishness. Number one, you should always sign your painting in red. That's just stupid. Number two, <laughs> you should always sign your painting with one stroke. I call that the Mark of Zero myth. You're going to become so famous, like Zorro, that everybody will recognize your mark. Again, arrogant and stupid. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I know I'm being mean, but I'm telling you the truth. Um, I'm, I ain't famous, but I'm better known than way, way, way most artists. And part of the reason I'm known is because, you, <laughs> doggone it, you can read my name. Anyway, okay, that's enough of that. I could go on, but that's plenty. <laughs> plenty too much, some of you are saying already. That is enough. Somebody please turn them off. <laughs> Let me get my iPad out here so I can read your fine comments. <laughs> Good to have you on board. I'm going to go downstairs to my 93 degree garage here in a minute. So, and I'll be doing a separate broadcast. Ah, uh, the, the, the green dress third, third arm. Okay, good. Glad I got that. Erlinda, thanks for helping me there. On the person behind her to put it as delicately as possible. <laughs> like a sore appendage. <laughs> Thank you. That is very delicate. Um, Toby, true painting has a proper balance of decoration, abstraction, and illustration. Ooh, that's a great, that's a great way to put it. That's a good way to put it. Decoration and illustration. I like that. Yeah, balance between abstraction and realism. Very good. Hello, Marlene. <laughs> she is watching. Good. You're an inspiration to us. Thank you, my dear. <laughs> no, <laughs> you are our inspiration. No, you're an inspiration too. Thank you. Um, Toby, I encourage you to look up a channel called Paul Talk. Paul Talk on YouTube. His videos on painting capture. Oh, good, 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 good. I'm always glad to hear about somebody, somebody new to watch. Uh, I will do that. Is it spelled T-A-L-K? Doesn't matter. I can probably find it from that spelling. Um, good, 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 good. <laughs> Uncle 60, butter pecan ice cream and watching Mr. Dan. <laughs> then back to the honeydew list. <laughs> uh, Orlando, <laughs> uh, good for you, embracing abstraction, forgiving and painting in a forgiving manner. Marlene, psychological focal points helps this vegan painter. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Marlene said she avoids all plants and animals. No, no, not plants. Animals and people. <laughs> because she was intimidated by, by them. <laughs> Good for you. And Toby does a la prima paintings, so I just scratch my signature with the end of my brush. Sometimes, I, I've seen that work. Sometimes at work. Oh, let me throw in one other thing. Do not use, uh, for your signature, do not use like a felt tip marker. That's just bush league. Yes, sometimes you can get away with a with a scratch, Toby. You know, it'd have to. I'd have to see. You'd have to see what it looks like. If it looks good, great, good enough. And that that's certainly a good good uh, solution. Hey, Lori, happy Canada Day! <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> yes, this section sponsored by Windsor and Newton. Uh, I have chicken scratch penmanship. My wife signs for me. <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Uncle 60, you bring up a good subject. Um, I do, you know, one of the strange sidelines of my career is doing calligraphy. I have several calligraphy videos out, which is pretty funny. And I'm not, I'm not a professional calligrapher, but anyway. 
Um, but I'm a pretty good teacher, I think. Anyway, um, and, and when I mention calligraphy to a lot of people, just like doing a signature, a lot of people say, oh, my handwriting is terrible. <laughs> my handwriting is terrible, too. Pen, uh, uh, a calligraphy comes out of a completely different side of your brain than normal handwriting. And I think the same thing is true of a signature. This is not the way I write my signature. This is me illustrating or drawing my signature. It comes from a, a completely different side of my brain than the side of my brain that does handwriting. All right, if you guys think I'm done, then I'm done. Appreciate your company. Um, that was All those changes were pretty minor and pretty subtle, besides some you know, significant anatomical erasing legs and arms and stuff like that, and a smudge on the face. I'm going to call it quits. Thank you. Thanks for all your comments. And um, I'll be, some of you can join me again, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes from now, I guess. You can watch me sweat. <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. 